Today we will learn what HTML is and how it works. Let's start. What is HTML, and what can it be used for? HTML is a standard markup language that is used to create web pages. It was first developed in the early 1990s, and it has since become one of the most popular ways to create websites. Let's take a closer look at some of the basic building blocks of HTML pages. Main parts of the website is head and body section. website in the browser tab styles script for tracing and analyzing data in the body section we have all of the content that is displayed including each text and position what can you do to customize your html elements the basic part of the html is blocks div and paragraphs p of course blocks show some part of the website and paragraphs of the text how to create links and use anchors to link to specific parts of a page to create link we use tag. To define URL, we can use an abstract URL with a domain or relative that displays a link within the same page. How to add images to your pages and use different image formats. To add an image, we use tag. How to create and format tables in HTML. We create tables with tag table, and then rows in TR and columns in TD. For example, in conclusion, HTML is an important language for web development. It is used to create and structure web pages, and it provides a way for developers to add interactivity and multimedia to their sites. It is easy to learn and use, making it an excellent option for beginners. If you're interested in learning HTML, there are plenty of online resources, such as tutorials and courses. With a little bit of practice, you'll be able to create beautiful and functional websites using HTML. So don't hesitate to get started today. We can create an HTML file in any text editor we like. Just keep in mind that the file must end in .html. Let's have a look at some basics. After creating the file, 
we can preview it by simply opening it in any internet browser. The basic HTML structure is div, but headers such as h1, h2, h3, and so on are also commonly used. What is Cascading Style Sheets? CSS or Cascading Style Sheets is a style sheet language used for describing the presentation of a document written in a markup language. A style sheet is a collection of rules that tells a web browser how to display a document written in HTML or XML. How to use Cascading Style Sheets? We defined that inside, head, section in, style, section. However, we can also define inline as an attribute inside the segment. The definition is defined for type and option that you choose. The font can be red, blue, or definite by standard RGB like 0F0F0F or RGBA, 255, 99, 71, 1. There are many styles that you can mark. Some examples, color, red, background color. 0F0F0F Border 1 pixel solid black Text align Center Float Right In conclusion, using CSS can help to improve the readability and appearance of your website. It is a simple way to style your text and create a cohesive look for your site. If you are not familiar with CSS, plenty of resources are available to help you get started. So why not give it a try? They are easy to use and can be customized to fit your needs. If you want to create a beautiful and user-friendly website, I recommend using Cascading Style Sheets. The attribute class is linked to the same property in the style section, allowing us to distinguish between HTML structure and CSS styles. Let's see our first table.
Now check at some metadata in the head section, such as the icon and title. We can use many classes, and in that case, we will apply styles from all marked classes.
We can define the position in a variety of ways. It is important that we have a clear view of our page. There are numerous aspects to define in order to have exactly what we require. Margin. This is the distance between your box and another element. We can easily see this again by determining order or background. This could be a parameter in percent or pixels, and it could apply to all or specific directions, such as margin left, margin right, margin top, and margin bottom. Padding. This could be a percentage or pixel parameter, as well as for all or specific directions. Padding left. Padding right. Padding top. Padding bottom. Position. Static, the most basic position is its base on the whole HTML view. Relative. This makes a basic position that determines all abstract positions in objects below the hierarchy. Abstract. This position depends on the relative parent. Fixed. This position is always related to the browser window. Stick to the border when we scroll. To determine the position, we can use left, right, top, and bottom, which identify the position in relation to a specific context, for example. This gives us position 5 pixels from right border and 10 pixels from top border. Text align. It determines where the text should be, on left or right or center, inside or justify a particular element like div. Vertical align. This determines whether the element should be at the top, bottom, or in the middle of the structure. Value can alternatively be expressed as a positive or negative number in percent or pixels. A positive number indicates that it is closer to the top, while a negative number indicates that it is closer to the bottom. Let's see how positions work in practice. It's common to use a border to determine where the objects on a page are.
Now let's try to create a second page and a link to it, as well as using an image as a button for this second page. Let's make this second page a little more different. Everything that was previously open is now required to be closed. The XML standard has had a significant impact on the HTML standard. We have a nested structure here. Structures with only one segment, such as input, receive a slash before being closed breaked. For two segments such as div or paragraph, we add the beginning of the second segment just after an open bracket. What is XHTML? The markup language XHTML is used to create web pages. It is based on HTML but is more restrictive in terms of what is permitted. This improves the readability and maintainability of XHTML pages. 
XHTML also has many features that HTML does not, such as better support for semantic markup. Why should you use it? It is standard WC3, as a result of which the website is rendered faster and has a higher ranking in Google. How to use it? Simply insert the begin on the document tag that appears on the screen. The most notable difference between HTML and XHTML is that XHTML requires all tags to be closed. So, look for XHTML validation errors on your website and repair them, and everything should be okay. Keeping up with XHTML standards might be tough at times because other libraries do not always supply code that is compliant. Remember that having something is common but not required, and that it is not always necessary to prevent wasting time. XHTML is a powerful tool for creating beautiful and functional websites. It's simple to learn and use, and it generates clean, semantic code that works with all major browsers. So, if you're looking for a dependable and efficient way to build your next website, XHTML is the answer you've been looking for. Let us now validate our page.
Let's use XHTML. What are HTTP requests? HTTP requests are the fundamental building blocks of the web. Whenever you view a web page, you are requesting data from a server. This article will define HTTP requests and explain how they work. We'll also go over some of the most common HTTP requests and how to use them in your applications. How do I make an HTTP request? To send HTTP request, you need to use forms that are part of the HTML standard. In JavaScript it uses AJAX protocol. What are the different types of HTTP requests? Request is defined based on type and status. The most popular types are, get, is used to request data. This is added to the query so don't send sensitive data here. Post, this is the request to send sensitive data when you want to receive information or when you want to update an object, you also use this type. Put. This type of request is used to create a new object. Delete. This type of object is to delete an object. Each status code defines a different scenario. For example, code 201 means created, and 401 is unauthorized. The status code started with 2xx are defined as success. Where 4xx are validation error and 5xx is server error. The most popular status are 200 success, 201 created, 204 no content, 400 bad request, 401 unauthorized, 403 forbidden, 404 not found, 500 internal server error. In conclusion, HTTP requests are an important part of the web. By understanding how they work, developers can create faster, more efficient websites and applications. In order to make the most of HTTP requests, it is important to use the right tools and techniques. With the right knowledge, developers can create web pages that are both user-friendly and perform well. HTML forms. Forms in HTML are used to collect user input. They are created by using the form element. The form element has many attributes that can be used to control how the form behaves. Attributes for forms, action, method. In the form element, you can add the attributes. The method attribute defines method of sending the request, should be post or get. The action attribute tells the browser where to send the data entered into the form. Types of forms, text input, password, checkbox, radio button, select box, file input many types of fields. Text area, input, select. The most common use field is input, which is single line text area, and there we can define attribute type like text, password, email, number, but also things like checkbox, a file, and much more. To have a big area to set text, we use text area. To have single choice we use select section with option subsection. To send data, we need a button like send that, we need to have input with type submit. Most of the fields have also attribute value that defines default value or text to show in the button. There are also attributes that validate data like required or pattern. In this field, we also have the attribute name that defines as identificator the backend will receive. For example, with sample login form like this. HTML forms are an essential part of website development. They allow you to collect information from your users and help you to keep track of what they are doing on your site. When creating a form, use the correct HTML elements and attributes to ensure that it functions correctly. You can also use CSS to style your form and make it look like you want. Finally, 
Be sure to test your form thoroughly before putting it live on your site. Now, let's take a look at how our login form works. The get method is fast, but it sends our information in the form of a URL. Although the post method is slow, we do not send our private data to public URLs.
And now, let's take a look at Inceptor in the Chrome browser. This is a great tool for debugging our website and experimenting with changes to the HTML or CSS structure. We can also check all requests here. Most browsers have similar tools. Simply look for them in your browser's help section. What kind of website do you want to set up? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.